Uh, the first bands I was in, um, all the bands I was in were in Brooklyn for some reason back then. That, that was where the musicians were. There certainly weren't any uh, English or birds-like minded people in Little Italy, that's for sure. I knew that. And anywhere else in Manhattan, I, I think, I don't know, for some reason it eluded me and I gravitated to Brooklyn, met a lot of people, musicians in Brooklyn. First band I was in was called the Ouija, after a Ouija board. And it was a ready sort of formed band that I just kind of joined in with. And they wrote songs and they were good. We were good right from the get. I mean, it was, but it was more of an American sort of folk rock, Bo Brummel's uh, Birds Love kind of a sound, which was great for me. And that was kind of the first, first thing I did. We recorded a demo, which I'm currently trying to get a hold of. And then after that, uh, we, we were scouted and we were kind of square looking. When I, when I look back on it, our music was freakier than we looked. So we were sort of square looking guys. So anyone came in to see us, I think we we're expecting maybe some freaks, you know, like, like New, Lower East Side, Velvet Underground, you know, and they kind of saw these pretty straight looking dudes playing, but really could play and, and write songs. So I kind of got frustrated with that. I myself wanted to be in something a little uh, more long-haired and, and wild and garagey. So uh, I was offered a gig in a band called The Five Toes, <laughs> if you can believe that. And this was a big step for me because I remember, <laughs> no pun intended, and uh, I remember going to a a corner and using a payphone to call the Ouija to tell him I was leaving the band, jumping ship to join another band, but I didn't give the name of the other band. I just, yeah, I'm kind of frustrated. I want to do something. And, and they were like, really? And, you know, they, they were kind of really upset. So anyway, I was impressed with the Five Toes because the guitar player can play the solo in Heart of Stone. And I was like, wow, you know, I'm in. You know, the only problem with the Five Toes was that's all they did, was Rolling Stone covers, but really good at it, and no originals. So I just came from a band where the, the guys were writing originals to pretty much a Rolling Stones cover band, but these cats look great. And you had the long hair. And they had long hair and a, ski and a, and a skinny Brian Jones ties and a whole bit in the boots. And I was like, whoa, these dudes are cool. And we went down to the Cafe Wa to audition to get a gig. By this time, I had talked them into doing a couple of, like a Who cover. I think I got them to do Substitute and uh, a cover by the group Love, who uh, I thought were the greatest, yeah. and especially the bass player. I loved the bass player, Ken Forsey. And uh, so we did a love song and we did a who song. So we go down to the Cafe Wa where, where Hendrix was discovered and, and all, all that kind of thing. Legendary place. And the guy that booked the place, his name was Tex. And I'll never forget. He said, all right, I want you to get up there and, and, and I want you to kill me. And, and, and I don't want any Rolling Stone wannabes. <laughs> and I thought, whoa. We're screwed because that's all we did with Rolling Stone. So anyway, we did our whole Rolling Stone set. We got the gig anyway.